Hi, so I'll just be showing you how to make a basic MK4i storm chassis. Uh, so what we'll start with is we're going to look at this right plane. And we're going to make a center point rectangle to represent the side of our chassis. So we're going to say this is a 28, like a 28 long chassis. And it's always using 2x1. So 2x1, two, 2 inches on this side. And we'll be, we're creating our side profile. So we're making this centered with the origin then we need to represent our wheels so we'll do like a three inch ish sds module wheel that's basically good enough and then we'll equal this and you can technically mirror it but i don't feel like doing it right now uh after this we need to set this height as 1.75 which is the wheel height and then we need to set our bumper which is five inches high and then 3.25 and then we can do a sketch fillet here and it's if you do 1.25 that is basically a bumper and then if we want to we can also get a line here and then we'll mirror this and this is basically the fundamentals of how you'd start up start off any of your master sketches so you kind of start it off like this and then after this we'll just make this all construction and here's our side profile this way we can change this length right here, which is our main driving length of our chassis. And this allows us to control our chassis length. So this is 28 inches. And you can see this goes from this side of the tube to the side of the tube. And yeah. So next we're going to make a plane and we're gonna offset this to 1.75 here up to make our actual chassis. And then by using this plane, we can just go on top of here and then start designing it. So we'll use this origin to start the center of the chassis. And then we can drag it a little bit. And then we can basically just go to the other edge like this. And then that represents the side of our chassis. If we look at the other angle, you can see how this does go all the way out. And since it's using this sketch as the main points, this is already 28 inches if we use the measure tool right here. And since I want this to be a square chassis, I'll just make this equal like this. And that's our square. After we do that, we'll offset everything. Okay, that doesn't work. We'll offset the lines individually. And we'll offset it down by one inch like this. And then after this, we're going to do it this way instead we'll draw some lines here and we'll make those our mirror lines and then we'll set our offsets for our tubes for the modules because there's like a gap in between right so this is kind of how you do it so we'll do 4.25 4.25 this is a little bit redundant but it's it's fine it doesn't really matter uh and then we'll just mirror everything so we'll mirror it like this, and then we will mirror this, and then that allows us to get our main tubes. After that, we want to get our, we want to have some form of cross beam, right? So we'll make a cross beam here, and we'll make this one inch, and then we'll add some like amount, let's say 3.5, and then that makes it like seven inches. You want to let's do four inches like that, and we can change it however we want. So. If I wanted to change it later, we can change it later. And then we'll mirror this line like this. And then we can confirm the sketch. So once we do this, we want to use the extrude individual. And we'll change the depth to 2 inches. And we'll select all of these tubes and bring it up. And you can now see that our tubes are now made in our swerve chassis. And they're all up to the 2 inches that were in our initial sketch. And you can also see how all the tubes are centered onto our on our origin, and our origin is sitting at the bottom of the floor. And we'll be using this fundamental over and over again in our like derived studios and whatnot in the future. So what's next is we need to use tube converter here and convert all these tubes to make our chassis like this. And we'll wait a little bit and we'll wait for it to do its magic. 
And for this one, I'll be using like one inch between holes like this. And then I'll offset and we'll run the tube uh, thickness as one eighth. And this is a pretty standard uh, sport of chassis config because it's pretty heavy and it's strong. So you can keep a lot of your weight in the bottom and your swerve chassis is basically invincible. So once tube converter does this whole thing, we can derive our swerve modules. So in my current workflow, I use I use the simplified MK4i modules, and then if we pull up derived uh, like this, MK4i low poly, uh, credit to Tristan, and we can just derive this into our our studio. After this, we get transformed by mate connector here, and. Select this mate connector right here, and then connect, and then just attach it to our tube. Like this. Actually, this might be off. This feels off. We'll figure it out in a second. Yeah, I'm I'm trolling a little bit. Okay. One second, my brain is processing. Should be this one. Oh, it's just flipped. My bad. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, my bad. Uh, so over here, you should not use auto offset. Uh, so the what do sort of module holes is you want to make sure this is point two five off, not zero point five. So in this specific scenario, you'd use centered on tube actually, and that makes it the correct offset. Yeah, there you go. Uh, after this, we'll use the circular pattern. So like that. Uh, if you use Alt C, you can look things tools up, and I use this frequently because I'm a little bit lazy, but we will just select the FK4i and then we'll revolve it like this. And then after this, we can choose. I'm going to be a little bit lazy and just use two plugs, but if you wanted to, you could run a gusset here. But we have our chassis. We can then go to our assembly and then press insert part studio here. Insert our part studio. Once we insert, we want to keep our mouse in this menu, and then go straight to this uh, check mark. And then that way your Swerve module stays in place, uh, or Swerve chassis. And you can see how right now it's centered on the origin with the origin on the floor, and that's good. Uh, what we could do now is we could left click and we could fix one of these chassis in place. And just group everything together like this. I assume you've gone through the odd shape tutorials on how to mate and whatnot, but because it's a chassis and it's basically going to stay the way it is, you can just group it. You can also just individually mate it if you want it, but we'll just do it like this for now. So now we're doing the now we have this. We want to probably get our uh, two plugs in. So we'll hide those two, and then we'll just. We'll just insert the two plugs from West Coast Products. And then we just insert them like so. I wonder if I can replicate this. So if you use the replicate tool, match individual edges like this. Yeah, I expected that to do that. And then we can select these top ones, and bam, we have all our two plugs. 
very cool. Show all instances, and we have our chassis with some module with some modules, and all is good. Uh, after this, we can take all these tubes, and we can change the color of them real quick. So let's change this appearance to a dark gray, and yeah. So say you don't want to use a simplified version and you want to use a full version. I am an advocate to always use the simplified version because it makes your load times a lot faster and it doesn't really hurt. But if you wanted to use a like high poly version, what you do is you could go to the MKCAD inserter app, which you could look up like MKCAD app. And Oddshape for FRC also explains how to download it, but it's it's pretty self-explanatory, you can figure it out. And we can just search up like MK4i. And we can just insert these. As so. Like that. And we can import it. And we'll just make this in place. And that's our spurf module, but fancy. So, as you see here, we have one part studio and one assembly, and our assembly is centered on this origin, and our part studio is also assembled on this origin, and this is something important that you want to keep in mind throughout your CAD. So, yeah, that's kind of it.